we had this at that wedding. I and I remember I, thinking it was so good. And it is yeah. good. But, like, it hit me different than... Well, palettes differ day to day. Yeah. But what I'm surprised is how well-crafted this came across. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And this is another Wild Card Wednesday video where we draw a sample at random from our pool of worldwide sipping spirits. It could be almost anything. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to smell it, we're going to taste it, we're going to give it a rating, we're going to find out the price, see if that changes our rating before we ever find out what we're drinking. We do it this way to take away all the bias and any hype that might be behind this product. We don't know. It could be expensive, inexpensive, available, hard to get. We do it this way again, so you get the most honest opinions possible. If you like that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because this is how we do our content over here. Let's get this thing on the nose. Let's do it. So initially off the bat, I'm getting a lot of alcohol. Really? Yeah. It's kind of like burning a little bit. And then I think I'm getting some fruitiness underneath it. I'm going to need to sip it and then come back to the nose because I think right now I'm just getting blown away by like alcohol. Man, I'm getting not any alcohol. I'm just getting fruit really? and wood. And I love this <laughs> nose. This smells so good to me. I'm getting fruit. And I just, yeah. I think it's being overshadowed by the ethanol fumes I'm, I'm getting off of this glass. Yeah. This has got some, it's got all kinds of stuff going on in it. It's like peachy, mango-y. I'm getting peach. Yeah. And it's, it's not strong, concentrated, sugary. It's almost like you're smelling a glass of peach mango juice from across the table. Like you're just catching a waft of it, but then also the nose has some prominence to it. Like it's, it's jumping out of the glass. Yeah. Let's taste it. Okay. Let's get on the palate. I think I'm broken. Why do you say that? This is not fruity at all. No, it's there, but it is very tempered. It's like when it's you drink it's okay. So here's the analogy I'm going to use on this. There's a big difference between sweet tea, especially Southern sweet tea and unsweet, and tea. unsweet tea. And this is like unsweet fruit juice Yeah, that has been aged unsweet. in a barrel for a little while. So it's got some woodiness to it. It's dry too. Also, my watch just told me that I needed to move. Okay, cool. Thanks for the update there. <laughs> in case you needed to know. I mean, I don't know. You want to move right into another sip here? Yeah, let's do it. It's kind of drying. I'm just, I'm just surprised. It smelled like there was some fruit there and I'm not getting it on the, the palate at all. Oh, I am. I am. I'm not. Is I'm my, getting is it. Is my tongue broken? I don't know. I'm getting it on the finish prominently along with the wood. It's all coming together and the finish is lingering around right now. It is lingering. It's making me salivate a little bit, like lingering. to make my mouth water. I'm actually really enjoying this. I think I'm getting more of the wood on the finish. And so to me, it's a little bit more dry and drying. Yeah. Which I'm wanting more fruit. And so I think I'm just cut my, my expectations didn't meet my reality. Maybe you're just in a fruity mood tonight. And since this Maybe. glass has a tempered fruity sweetness, you're going to hold it against it. You're going to hold a grudge. Maybe. You're going to rank it terribly because Maybe. you don't I mean, like it. That's my prerogative. It is. I mean, if, well, the thing too is that that might be what you're feeling tonight. You might want more fruitiness out of this. Just like you could go up to a pour that you know you enjoy, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't hit you right. I actually am surprised you're not liking this because it seems like the type of whiskey you would like. I know. Because you like a tempered sweetness. I do. And, and this I, is very tempered sweetness. It is. And I think I went into it with the expectation of it's going to be like a scotch or an Irish. And so there's going to be that juicy fruit and that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I think I got a little disappointed and that's my own fault. It's not yeah. this whiskey's fault at all. It's my own fault. But at the same time, it is what it is. It I is. can't change it. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes you're in the mood for a cheeseburger. Sometimes you're in the mood for tacos. Yeah. And if you want a cheeseburger, the best tacos in the world aren't going to taste good. Exactly. And if you want tacos, the best cheeseburger in the world is not going to taste good. Yeah. I'm not saying this is the best cheeseburger or the best taco or the best whiskey out there because it doesn't seem that way, but it does seem like a very good whiskey, mm -hmm. very enjoyable whiskey. seems like it's got some good age on it. There's a really nice balance and the experience of this pour is what I'm finding the most remarkable. Mm. Like it comes in fruitiness on the front of the palate that ramps up into the sweetness and then the transition to the oak. Like it's just, it's just a smooth, for lack of a better word, it's a smooth wave of flavor 
the experience is just really nice on this. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to take it that that's blending and blending very well. I'm seeing what you're saying, but minus the fruity aspect tonight. There is a wave of flavor, but it's more oak and drying, which isn't bad. Like, I don't dislike it. Mm. I just want more fruit. I'm getting, like, the faintest kiss of, like, that honeysuckle note that I get in a single malt sometimes. And I love when I get that note because it's not full-blown floral that I don't like. Mm -hmm. Like, feel the flowers floral. I don't like that. But if you can just give me, like, a little bit of a, a honeysuckle type of note in there along with the honey the fruit, the malt, the mm -hmm. oak. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm enjoying this quite a lot. Where are you at on this glass? Honestly, I'm going to give it just, just okay. Just okay? That's what I felt like you were going to say. It's not bad. I just, honestly, a different night, I could think something different. So yeah. tonight is just getting just okay. I'm thumbs up. I like this a lot. Somebody poured a glass of this for me. I would finish it and ask for another and another and Please, another. Lisa, can I have some more? I don't love it. Like, it's not a love situation, but I do really like this a lot okay. for what it is. This is something I could drink and pay attention to the nuances because it is delicate and nuanced. Or I could just flat out have it in the background yeah. and just enjoy it while I'm watching a movie and it just tastes dang good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out the price, see if that changes our ratings, and then find out what we've been drinking. Okay. This is $50. This is number 12 in our key, so it's very high up in the list. This is 50 bucks. It's not bad. It's still saying I'm just okay, but that's not a bad price point. I'm going to go two thumbs up for $50. Yeah, you really like it, and that's yeah. not. That's probably one of the more least expensive international yeah. whiskeys that you can find because they tend to be a little bit mm -hmm. higher than American bourbon to yeah. rise. And typically thumbs up means I want a bottle. Two thumbs up means I have to have a bottle. And I'm not saying I have to have a bottle of this, but, but I am saying the value, it, I do want a bottle of it. And the value is so high for what at you're getting? $50 for what you're getting that I feel like I have to go two thumbs up. I just would, think this would you is pay more than fifty dollars for it? Um, sixty. I think sixty or sixty-five would be a fine price. Okay. Like this tastes like a lot of sixty or sixty-five dollar scotches and Irish whiskeys that I've tried. International okay. whiskeys, except it's coming in at a lower proof point or a lower price point, and it seemingly is very well crafted. So okay. you stayed on just okay. I stayed. And I'm two thumbs up. Wow, very divided scores here. All right, this is. What is it? What is it? This is the Glenlivet 12 year double oak, 40% ABV. This is a Speyside single malt scotch. Okay. This is our bottle. The Glenlivet 12. This, look, the Glenlivet 12 to me is very classic scotch. I think this bottle is actually like $47.99. I can't put that in there though because it'll stick out like a sore thumb. Glenlivet to me is just classic scotch. And I know a lot of people like to hate on the Glenlivet. Why? I, I get that. Because it's like one of the scotches that most people go towards, just like the Macallan. Like most people oh. gravitate towards them. And people love to say that Glenmorangie is better and Glenfiddich. Well, and I all feel these like this one would be an approachable scotch for a new scotch drinker because it's not so um, sharp. Yeah. No. And so it's not so like. It's not peated. It's not so smoky. Like there, it's yeah. it is balanced. There's not a lot of fruit in here for me tonight, which is disappointing. Yeah. But maybe that's okay for like a new Scotch drinker. All of that I agree with. I'll say we have personal history with this product, with this bottle. We've been at places before. We've been at weddings where the bars aren't very stocked, and it's mm. like, okay, what are we doing? Are we drinking Maker's Mark neat, or are we drinking Glenlivet 12? Neat? I remember this and I'm, one. I'm drinking Glenlivet if those are my choices. Like, and I will say, I know people love to hate on Glenlivet. The channel Curiosity Public, we'll put a link down there in the video description to their channel and particularly their video of a blind flight of a lot of the popular 12 year beginner scotches. And no spoilers, but the Glenlivet held its own, maybe even more than held its own, oh. against some of the other pours that people say will just blow it out of the water. We'll link that below. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really enjoyable. Yeah. I, when we finish this bottle, I will buy another one. This is the one we had at that wedding, right? Yeah. And this, and then we got home. I went out and bought a bottle. I, I had Glenlivet yeah. 12, I don't know, over a decade ago. Yeah. And then 
we had it at a wedding because I, I was like, I remember that being all right. And enough. I do remember at the wedding thinking that it was really good. It was also very easy to drink. Mm -hmm. Like it was almost dangerously easy to drink. And so we were like, this is not an open bar. It's cash bar. We have to like control. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a staple scotch to start your scotch journey with. Mm -hmm. If you like agree. it, if you like it, there's other ways, other routes you can go. If you like the tempered sweetness, there's things you can look for in other pours. Yeah. If you like the oakiness that's on here, then there's that can lead you down a path of some of the higher age expressions. Mm -hmm. If you like the smokiness, that can lead you like the little kiss of smoke on the yeah, back end. Yeah, and everything is just like a dabble in it. So if you like a yeah. certain aspect of this, you can kind of use that as a pinpoint to like experiment in other areas. Yeah, again, I don't love it. I did give it two thumbs up. I don't love it, but it's just yeah. so dang enjoyable yeah. that I, I can't help but What's funny, feel like a lot of credit is due here. What's funny is that I'm not changing my rating, but because of the nostalgia that I have with that bottle yeah. of having it at that wedding stuff, I would probably change my rating. You wouldn't be mad at up. having a bottle around the house. Right. Yeah. But I'm not going to. My official score is just okay. But there is some emotional connection there that, mm -hmm. that does play a part in when, when you're buying whiskey at yeah, all. Like it, it emotional connections can make you buy things that maybe you wouldn't really like, but you like it more because there's that emotional pull. I mean, let's be honest. It's not just whiskey. Our emotions make us do some crazy stuff in life. That's true. All the time. That's People have ruined their lives over what their emotions make them feel. Well, so let's not get that crazy, y'all. If the worst your emotions are doing are making you buy a $48 bottle of pretty dang good scotch true. for a beginner true. or even somebody who tends to like something a little bit more elevated. Yeah then that ain't too bad in my book. And if our channel ain't too bad in your book, then subscribe. If you like the video, like it. And if you'd like to join us on a live stream to have a pour, hang out, chat, we would love to have you. Hit the bell down there. It'll let you know when we're going live every month. Absolutely. That's it for today. Be good to each other. And until next time, cheers. cheers.